Hi there, um, I'm Bill. I'm a lecturer in electrical and computer systems engineering at Monash University. And so this semester we've all moved to online learning, which has been an exciting experience for everyone. Um, one of the things that we've been doing as part of this second year core subject, electric circuits that I've been teaching with about 300 students in it, is doing labs online. Now, normally, we'd be in a lab environment with a whole bunch of people in desks by, uh, side by side with each other. And what we had in that sort of environment was the ability for students to sort of turn to the person next to them or the group behind them or whatever, and have a bit of a chat about the lab task, what um, they've been getting, they understand, what they're perhaps having some trouble with. Um, and what we were finding was that in the online situation and with Zoom, we weren't really able to have that sort of ad hoc collaborative aspect of labs, which is a really great tool, we think, um, for students to be able to learn, is being able to chat to each other and figure things out as a cohort. Um, and so what was suggested to us by both our demonstrators and by our student cohort um, through a feedback session was, hey, why don't you look at using Discord for online learning? Now, Discord is a online platform that is used for collaboration in online gaming. And so one can imagine that, well, if it's good for one thing for collaboration, why not try it for teaching? And so uh, due to the COVID crisis, the Discord team had already heard this from people and started setting up uh, servers, as they call them, um, as collaborative spaces for education. And so I'll just go through and show you what that looks like for my subject now. Um, if I can share my screen. There we go. All right, so what um, the chat's a little bit quiet at the moment. Um, we're running labs today, but we've just hit the gap between two classes here. But what I can show you is what this kind of looks like. So we've got a bunch of text channels. And so that's where different um, groups can collaborate uh, by showing up different images from what they've captured from the lab, um, having a bit of a chat about what's going on. Um, type in different commands, show different uh, outputs from their simulations and so forth, and have a bit of a chat about what's going on um, in their um, uh, their simulations. Now, you're also able to like paste in stuff like, you know, lecture slides. So, hey, I've seen this um, circuit that we're trying to analyze. What is that? Um, uh, have we gotten through that before? How can I understand this? You can pull lecture material, you can pull stuff from tutorials paste that and so forth. Um, the other thing that we have are these study groups. And so these are spaces where um, students can have a chat about what's going on. There we go. And so you can live have a bit of a chat about uh, your results, what's what's going on, what you don't understand, debug things with your peers, so on and so forth. And we also have people like Rory, one of our Dems, jumping in on this and interjecting where you need. So it's like in the lab, you might whack up your hand and say, hey, Dem, can you help out here? Um, the other thing that we've got, Heshen's now live in this study group, so we'll show that. And so he's now showing his screen and showing what's going on in his simulation. Um, oh, that's weird. Can you click run again, please? And talking through that. And he's got Rory in there telling him, okay, yeah, I understand what you've got. It's a little bit weird. Here's how maybe we can debug these things. So um, it gives you sort of a real time way to both chat to each other, share your screen, share your simulations, um, and also share resources as well. 